Hello, this is Reb Brad, and you're listening to the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from the Touchline. This week is part four of a four-part series. It's a longer interview that we've cut down a little bit into shorter segments, but I'm really pleased to have special guest with me, Rod Underwood. Rod is a former professional soccer player, and he's currently head coach of Chattanooga FC, a team that plays in the NISA League, National Independent Soccer Association. Chattanooga FC just won the NISA Independent Cup a few weeks ago, and they've been on a tear in the league this year. Rod also serves on the Soccer Chaplains United Board of Directors, and a few weeks ago, he shared with the board his personal mission statement that he's written and that he works to live out in life, and I thought it would be great to have him on the podcast. So here we go, week four, part four. Rod shares this week about that personal life and mission statement, how he formed and crafted it, and then we get to play a fun little game of Crosses with Rev to end out the interview. Stay tuned. We kick off right after this. He's found the space, and he's found the back of the net. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have... He has the hat-trick, the second in his career, the third of the night, the hat-trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner, goes towards the near post, and you're on the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! I I know, too, also important to you, alongside that philosophy, uh, so the ball is important, your faith is important, you've said that. But I know too, Rod, you've written this personal life mission statement that you try to live out. And and I wondered if you could, you recently shared this with the board in a, in a board meeting a, a, a few weeks ago. I wonder if you could share with us that life mission statement. And, you know, how do you try to live that out? Not, not just as a former professional player, but now as a professional coach, as someone in and about soccer, as a as a dad, as a husband, as a, a follower of Jesus, how do you live out? What is that personal mission statement and how do you live that out? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I think it, we probably should take a step back a little bit because <clears throat> in 2009, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2009, I was coaching Cleveland City Stars. So Cleveland, you probably heard Cleveland City Stars. They were yeah. run and run by ambassadors in football. At that time, they call ambassadors in soccer. So very large international missions group. And our focus of that team was to obviously win a professional team, but also to build up mission minded soccer players who could go into other teams around the world and um, share their faith and touch their team in that way. So that was, and so from there, right, being around ambassadors, and being around them, because it's, I mean, you know, the missions group was fantastic, right? And I had always been looking for a way to use, to combine my faith and, and soccer. But when I went there, it's like, okay, this is this is like what I've been looking for all my life in terms of mm-hmm. how to work, use soccer and missions together. In actuality, um, after finishing coaching there, we were, I was considering Strong becoming a full-time missionary. Um, that was really something that was very close, very close. It was a, it was a serious conversation and a serious like thought and going through the process and all those kind of things. So it was, it was serious. <laughs> so, but in that, right. Um, and, you know, in that, um, I, being around the missions group really, you know, one of the things that they wanted to do with the missionaries was to help them develop a personal mission statement. So I, I got involved in that. And so it's evolved a little bit since then, obviously, but um, my personal mission statement is to use the game of soccer to impact coach, impact culture and change lives for the kingdom of God to awaken believers. When I say awaken believers, a lot of believers are sleeping, right? They're just kind of, going through the motions they believe, but it's God really leading them in every action of their life and to connect with non-believers, right? And when I say connect with non-believers, I'm not coming to beat you over the head about God. I might, I might not even talk to you about it, but if my life shows, right, I want to make sure that I'm loving you, showing you, you're going to clearly know my faith, 
but I'm not here to make you change. Just like God does not force us, I'm not here to force you. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's important to connect with you. It's important, no matter who you are, no matter what kind of lifestyle you live, live. It's not for me to treat you any differently because simply God made you in a human and I'm going to treat you in the way that God wants you to be treated. So when I say connect with believers, sometimes we go, oh, you're going to be the guy on the side of the road reading scripture and shouting it. No, that's not me. But what it is, is showing you that you're import important, that we can, that you want to know and have a conversation about, Rod, why are you like this? Why do you do this? And so that's, that's why the mission statement is so important. So everything that I do, the decisions that I make, it has to coincide with that mission statement. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a, a beautiful way of putting it. And, and and the truth is, at least from my experience in football, is that the, the, the guys that are, you know, on the sides, you know, beating down folks with, with scripture or faith or religion, they just don't last long in the game because it's like, it's just not a place for it like that in, in that way. Um, people don't receive that well. So, and great for you to, to like not only have that mission statement and, but to live it out because that's, um, you know, it's, it's really important that, that people realize that you're there for them and with them. And, and I love what you're saying there about just awakening those who have faith, those that who are believers, like to get them to realize like there can be a, a synergy between who they are, uh, what they do. Um, man, it sounds like you're a missionary to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. So, Rod, one more time. Um, tell us that, that mission statement. To use the game of soccer to impact culture and change lives, to awaken believers, to connect with non-believers for the kingdom of God. Now, you know, as a coach, um, as someone who maybe shares this 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 philosophy, this personal mission statement at different appropriate times with others, athletes, other coaches, um, those in, in in the clubs that you work for, do do you ever uh, do do you help model for some of the athletes and others that you're influencing and affecting? Do you encourage them like, hey, maybe sit down and write your own personal mission statement or a life statement? Maybe, Maybe it's not uh, the same language as what you've developed, but has that ever been, you, you talked about personality tests and like building culture. Is this one of the cultural movements that you do with the, the team? Do you, do you sit down and write out, I don't know, goals for the year or personal mission statement kind of things? Yeah, we do things like that, right? So right now, so <clears throat> what, I'm, <clears throat> what I'm working on now is, right, um, sort of cultural buzzwords for the club, right? So we, we create a soccer language, right? We have, we have a specific way we speak and we train our players every day. Um, and we keep, we keep hounding and hounding it, but that's on the field. So we're trying to create cultural buzzwords that like, you know, when things are tough, we can, you know, we can, we can, we again have a language, right? And so those cultural buzzwords are something that we feel like are, are really important. And part of those, we as a, a staff, a technical staff, we're working on it, but also the players are working on that too, that we can combine those. Um, and then the next steps would be is, you know, because I never really thought about having players do their own mission statement, but it's something that now I'm definitely going to look at and think about like, okay, as we build these cultural buzzwords, yeah, we set goals, we set individual goals, and all those kind of things. And, you know, we use, like any other modern club, we use data analysis, we use data to use evidence-based coaching to say what kind of player these, what kind of what kind of player, how successful are you based on the data and the data analysis, right? We spend a lot of hours studying and researching data. We probably look at 500 data points that we analyze. Okay. Um, and so it's really, uh, it's really like really important for us, but on the culture side of the off field side of it, I think it's important now that you mention it, that it's, it's time that these guys create their own personal mission statement. I mean, it could be after I get done playing, I want to be an attorney after whatever. Right. You know, I, but I think it's important to, it gives them a path and a, and a goal, just like for us, right. We have an end game when we have the ball, the end game is score goals. Right. Mm -hmm. But we have a way how we want to, 
progress the ball up the field to ultimately get to the positions to score goals. So the mission statement is deciding what the end result is going to be and then developing the steps to get to that end, end, end result. So I think that creating mission statements for the, for the guys is like super important. Nice. Nice. Cool. Well, Rod, man, appreciate all the time you've given today. And, uh, and, and for this interview, we, we might even break this down into a, into a few segments um, because just really, I think it's really rich. I think guys that are coaches will, will grab on to certain things. Guys that are players or former players will, will grab on to some things. Guys that are pe- people that are people of faith will grab on to certain things. But, but before we end for today, I want to have a little bit of fun. Um, I like to invite uh, guests on the podcast, especially footballers who have played before. And in this little game I call Crosses with Rev. So the goal is to answer as many questions as possible, as as quickly as possible. I've got a list of like 20, 30 questions that I'll ask here. Um, it's it's only 60 seconds. And um, so so let me go over it. And, and I haven't shown you any of these questions I'm going to ask you. Uh, so, so this is going to be spontaneous. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I've, I've got my timer, uh, ready over here, but I'm going to ask you two types of questions. I'm going to ask you an either, or those questions are worth one point. And, uh, and then I'm going to ask you a fill in the blank, uh, question or a complete the sentence. Those are worth three. So there's some other people that have played and, uh, and we'll, we'll just put you up against them onto the leaderboard. We'll see how you do. Um, the goal is answer as many questions as you can. If you feel like a question's too tough, like I've, I've tried to do a little research, trying to ask you a, a tough question here and there, you might, you might be, uh, your loyalties might feel divided. You can <laughs> ask, and, uh, and, and you, but you lose out on the points. So um, I'm going to give you a little warm up here. You know, it's, it's always good when we, when we have football, we, we get a little warm up, a little stretch of the brain, the legs, et cetera. Uh, I'm going to give you a sample of both questions just to kind of get you ready. So, uh, so here we go. You ready? Uh, yeah. Man, you are Man City. Man City. Uh, my favorite band is. P.O.D. All right, all right, all right. I, I think you're going to do well here. In fact, I hope I have enough questions because you're you're actually a, a bit quicker than uh, some of the other folks that I've that I've had in the game. So. Um, uh, maybe if I run out of questions, I'll just give you some some bonus points uh, for, <laughs> for those in. So um, let me let me go into my list. Let me make sure I've got everything ready and set to go. And let me. I, I'm just feeling like I'm feeling it, Rod. You're you're gonna you're gonna kill it. So I'm gonna <laughs> okay. add a question here. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the timer after I ask the first question. Um, and then if you're in the midst of answering a question uh, and time's run out, it's okay. All right? So ready? Yeah. Here we go. Left-footed or right? Right. My favorite football club is? Barcelona. Gecko or gambler? Gecko. Coach or play? Coach. AC or FC? FC. Atlanta United FC or Portland Timbers? Portland Timbers. Dribble or pass? Dribble. East Coast or West Coast? West Coast. My favorite post-game meal is? Nothing. (laughs) USSFA or Royal Netherlands Football Association Advanced License? Both. Attack overload or defend overload? Attack overload. 442 or 451? 442. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Bonnie Field or Finley Stadium? Finley Stadium. Sterling or De Bruyne? De Bruyne. My favorite comedian is? Don't have one. My favorite Bible verse is? Um, Galatians 2.20. All right. That's good. I, uh, I'm going to have to tabulate the scores here. Let's see. No, no comedian. We're, we're, oh, I'm going to have to maybe send you a few guys that I think are funny myself. Um, okay. No comedian. Let's see. You, you got almost – no post-game meal. Tell us uh, – you don't have a post-game meal? No, I mean, I'm usually – after the game, even coaching after the game, I'm so exhausted. I don't want to eat anything. 
Really, really. So yeah. no pasta, no like sweet thing, no savory thing. You just kind no. of you hit the hay. Yep. Yeah. Or I hit the hay, or I go look at data or watch the game again. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I know what kind of coach you are. Now I know what kind yeah. of coach you're already review. You're in the in the review the film review room before uh, yeah. anyone else is. Yeah. Well, let, let me see uh, what other questions I had. Um, Adidas or Nike? How would you have answered that one? Nike. Okay. I uh, had Man City or Barcelona in there. So which 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 team would it be? Barca. Okay. Guardiola or Cruyff? Oof. Cruyff. Okay. And my last one was Stumptown or Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Okay. I figured I figured that was the answer to that one. Oh <laughs> man. I, I think I've got to go through these points. It's Rod, I, I'm gonna have to check the leaderboard. I, I think you just, uh, I think you ascended the leaderboard out of everybody that's played so far. I will, uh, I'll have to update <laughs> that, and I'll throw that in in somewhere into the podcast. So, man, Rod, thank you so much again for your time. I know you're you're really busy. You probably got some some uh, game film you need to go review or some players. In 30 minutes, I'm watching the game. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, brother. Well, hey, thank you so much for your time today yep. and for being part of the podcast and. Uh, uh, just want to thank you for, um, yeah, just everything you've done for myself, for Soccer Chopins United, for Chattanooga FC, for football everywhere. I appreciate your heart, your spirit, and, uh, and, and everything you've done. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Well, All right. everyone, you've been listening to the From the Touchline podcast and coming to you from the Touchline, head coach of Chattanooga FC, Rod Underwood, and myself, Rev Brad Kenny. Uh, Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.